I want to see children's books represent the world that we live in. You know, we can't show our children the world at the moment, and that is the primary way they learn when they're young is through books. The door's opening for many more creators to actually tell their stories. And I'd love to see more diversity just on the shelves of average homes in Australia. Maxine, thank you so much for joining us on Artworks. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Now, I was incredibly intrigued to find out that you had actually studied and practiced law. How did you make the jump to writing? Well, I always wanted to be a poet. You know, I was always writing kind of throughout high school and then got to the end of high school and said to my mum, I'm going to go to university and study poetry. And she kind of said, how are you going to eat? <laughs> That's nice, dear, but you might want to have dinner sometimes. <laughs> Generation Zoom grew up today. Learning stops can be lost as fast as accumulated. But health is wealth and love is gold, and life will find a way. You know, I was also really interested in social justice, and so it seemed like a natural thing to kind of choose a course, which was a law course plus a creative writing course. Um, so that's what I ended up doing, was kind of hopping off to university and, and doing both. So you're the author of acclaimed books like Foreign Soil and The Hate Race. What led to you writing for children? I was in the library one day with my daughter. She was about four at the time. And we were searching for just kids' picture books. And, you know, as you do if you're a parent of colour, I was pulling books off the shelf, looking for books that would show her some kind of representation of herself. And I just kind of had this realisation that wow, my child is more likely to be able to read a book that is narrated by, you know, an anthropomorphized animal, you know, a talking bear or a penguin or something, than a child that looks like her, um, even as a minor character. I just kind of rang up my publisher and said, look, I wanna, I wanna write a kid's book. I wanna start writing picture books. For the uninitiated, how do you describe your book when we say Black Lives Matter? Um, I describe it really as an illustrated poem about what Black Lives Matter means to one family, you know, the central family in the book. Um, and really it's kind of, I suppose I created it almost as an anthem of black hope and black joy and black empowerment. When or what was the moment where you thought this book has to be written? This book was created in 2020 and it was during the first COVID-19 lockdown in Melbourne and watching protests unfold across the world after the murder of George Floyd. And because we were locked down at home, there was this 24 hour news cycle of, you know, my kids and, and other black kids and other, you know, non-black kids watching the footage of George Floyd and watching protests and watching, you know, all of these horrific things replaying and just thinking, how do we create a safe, um, comforting space to have a conversation about what's happening outside of that news cycle with young people. In Australia, I think that race and racism is an incredibly divisive conversation. As a black writer, Maxine, how do you push through the enormity of these issues to still be creative? <laughs> it's hard sometimes. Um, I mean, I think you know, part of the challenge is how do I create something beautiful? You know, like in all this anger and all this sorrow and all this injustice, how do I still make something that someone is going to open and say, wow, you know, this is positive in some way and it contains joy and it speaks to my heart in that way. There's this misconception sometimes that this is a black book, it's for black kids. You know, why would I show my non-black kid this book and engage them in these issues? And the answer is, you know, for their humanity. You know, don't you want them to be a global citizen? Don't you want them to be able to engage with the world in a fair and equitable way? And even just to not be behind their peers in knowing about, about these issues. Has there been a really powerful moment where a child has given you feedback about when we say Black Lives Matter? I think one of the school talks that I did online, 
um, where a child just kind of said, this, this family looks like my family. You know, it was kind of question time and that was kind of their comment rather than a question. Um, and I think probably even that child didn't necessarily realise that what they were saying is, I don't often see myself represented. Tell me, how do you describe your arts practice? I think increasingly I feel like a multidisciplinary writer. Um, you know, I also do illustrating now, so that's part of my writing process, whereas 15 years ago I probably would have said I'm a poet. Let's talk illustrations. Where did it start for you? <laughs> I always drew, um, but I never, yeah, but I never really thought of myself as an illustrator or an artist. My first two books had illustrators attached. I, I saw them having so much fun doing the illustrations and that was kind of it. I thought, I want to do this. I want to get my hands dirty. And so I spoke to my publisher and said, I'm going to do a book and I'm illustrating it myself. <laughs> and there was a little bit of silence. <laughs> And so that book was Fashionista, the first book I illustrated myself. And so the idea was just to create a fashion anthem and look at lots of different ways that you can empower yourself, whether it's through a t-shirt or staying in pajamas all day or wearing a feather boa. Um, so just that joy of, I suppose, different bodies enjoying the power of fashion. So Maxine, I would love you to draw me in the fashionista style. Can we give that a shot? Yes, let's do it. What kind of fashion do you love? Well, it's funny because I'm a bit of a, you know, I'm a bit of a dag. You know, I've written this book about fashion, but really, you know, I love to get around in a tracksuit and things like that at home. Hey, don't knock the track of this. <laughs> I need to take a photo. I need a close-up of these earrings. Oh my gosh. Okay, Namilla, okay. are you ready for your fashionista portrait? Let's do it. <laughs> Can I open my eyes? Open your eyes. That looks amazing. I look fabulous. I look amazing. <laughs> you do look fabulous, <laughs> even without the picture. Oh my gosh, I love it. Even the hands in the pockets. I mean, it's your style. I just drew it. Oh, my God. Am I allowed to steal it for the of set? Of course you are. It's my gift to you. <laughs> Incredible. I love it. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>